Hello everyone, I am Kostav Mukherjee, I am a first year PhD student and a professor of Paolo Shikarian at uh, Arizona State University and today I am going to present uh, a work called By Reason and it's an open source software uh, for open world reasoning with temporal logic. So let's first talk about our motivation behind this work. So uh, there has been long term calls for neurosymbolic approaches to a lot of tasks and it has only been getting louder nowadays now that there is a lot of um, very obvious critical errors that the black box, mo black box models are doing and something we have seen yesterday during the session as well. So, uh, well, uh, there has been a lot of work on logic programming, right? It's been there in the 60s, 70s and 80s. There's a recent emergence of a bunch of frameworks and approaches like the logical neural nets or logical tensor networks and differential IP. And uh, we felt a key need to this, uh, unite these key, key capabilities and create a like modern scalable implementation. So that's what PyReason is. It's an open source Python implementation for deduction in logic programming. So we build this on all the advances in uh, the KRR field and specifically uh, I would like to mention this work by Kiefer and Subramanian which has stood the test of time for what, 30 years now and it's a logical paradigm which, which serves as the best base for a lot of advances today and it, it discusses many of the key ideas today. So we aim uh, by reason at uh, supporting current and future frameworks and the key concepts that we support are annotations in first order logic which also extends to the propositional case, uh, open world reasoning, uh, reason by default works on monotonic logic, however we also support the uh, non-monotonic relationships across time step. And this is uh, a good thing and a key thing uh, which extends the expressivity of reason in general because we are doing open world logic it might uh, be useful. We also do finite temporal logic which synthesizes really well with neural approaches which has a input for with limited size. We can do multi-step inference and knowledge graphs which is like a vehicle for a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, inference based approaches today. We are able to handle them. Uh, it's, in fact that's our input as I will show later. So why by reason even though everything uh, or most of the things are very well established. So first of all, there are differing opinions today as to which of these concepts are necessary to solve a task. And as a result, we see uh, like researchers in different labs, in different areas come up with different emerging frameworks which supports a subset of these, but not all. But uh, even though uh, that is the case, uh, and, and, and also what I talked about being the people calling for these approaches and every time an LLM fails they are saying that a symbolic uh, approach would help in those cases. We don't really have an implementation which can do all of these together. And I feel one of the big advantages of the ML area right now over the emerging neurosymbolic area is that any person can open up a Python code uh, like Python uh, notebook and just write a 10 line code to solve a classification problem. That's not the case here. And uh, that's what we are uh, trying to fill the gap here. So it's a modern implementation. We have a Python library which is like installs in a minute and you can just plug and play. So <laughs> kind of PyTorch, PyReason along those lines. Uh, we use a specific Python library called Numba. So what it does is converts a lot of Python code into machine code and as a, as a result we get a lot of speed up. And that's another thing uh, aimed at symbolic frameworks which we are aiming to solve that, so that we can compete with neural uh, architectures. And it's open source and the objective for us is so that the community can all build it together, modify it and adapt it for their own tasks and domains. And it, it works well, like it's complementary to the Nessie approaches. So first of all, there is no neural component to by reason. In fact, any rule you learn from a neural rule, rule learning approach can be used to reason with by reason. Also, it's to be noted that it, it is not a neural symbolic framework. It supports neural symbolic frameworks like LNMs and LTNs. So just as an example, 
LNNs and PyVs in both supports things like interval logic, rule weights, biases, upper down mode inference. And again, PyVs in and LKN supports fuzzy operators, quantifiers, and symbol grounding. So let's talk about the interface. How do you work with it? So this is the overall interface. We have knowledge graphs and rules coming in in the formats of GraphML files and YAML files. Uh, and we get inferences and explanations in the form of rule tracing, which is, I feel, a quite an interesting addition, which I'm going to give some examples of. So first, uh, if it was not real, like how do we interface predicate calculus with knowledge graphs? So this is a really easy way to think about it. We use unary predicates to model attributes in the nodes, and then binary predicates for edges. Logical rules, like many of you here will be familiar with this, but this is like the different kind of logical rules we support. The first rule talks about like a student in maybe a university setting. So the student, uh, so X is student with a certain interval bounds and has a GPA and so at the end of a single time step, which can be a year, a quarter, a semester, uh, the likelihood of them to be promoted is given by this function in the head of the rule. And here t could be t norm like the ones listed, or it could be t norms, algebraic functions, a classical case, a proposition case, all of which pi is in supports. Um, a simpler version of this would be an algebraic function in the head, and this rule has also existential quantifier. So what this says is that you know x is like similar to the previous rule, could be a student, y is a subject. So if x takes two different subjects and, and scores certain marks in them, which is again given by your bounds, then the GPA is an algebraic function of that. And again, we support uh, the classical case. This is an example with an universal quantifier, which says that a student, if he, if he or she passes all the courses and is in the top 70 percentile of the batch, then they'll be promoted after a year. So obviously, like, these rules are not based on anything. It's more of an example to show the kind of stuff we support. We also have something called interpretations, so wanted to uh, talk about that. So interpretations just map these atomic propositions to uh, real valued and temporal annotations. So uh, and uh, the here A is could be atoms, uh, the T hat could be time points or time ranges over which the annotation is defined, but it can also be uh, specified that it's valid over the entire time range, which is basically facts as we know in uh, logic. We incorporate literals as well by having different annotation and then specifying constraints so that both our atom and its negation cannot be true at the same time. And we also use model uncertainty by uh, defining interpretations as like this. So just as an example, if the, we consider this binary predicate friend Jack, friendship between Jack and Phil over three different uh, months, then like when we don't know anything, the zero one would be the uncertain case, but we also support the proposition cases when it's friends, not friends, similar to true and false. So I'll talk to one of the experiments we have in the paper and then also show the output of uh, the software. So uh, the data set. So Bokeh social network is like Facebook, but in Eastern European countries specifically <coughs> in Slovakia. And this is like the scheme of the data set which you work with. So the green nodes are people, uh, the blue nodes are uh, animals, and, and the colors are in orange nodes, and the different colored agents, the agents are diff could be different uh, binary predicates uh, showing the relationships. So the black ones are friendships, and the blue one is uh, having a pet or, like, uh, or ownership of pets. And then the orange and green ones are basically hair color, eye color, like that. That's, that's the input data in the form of knowledge graph. And just to show how the process flows, let's consider this as a running example. So there are three people with friendship relationships, and they have uh, uh, pets of different kind. And let's consider this rule set. So uh, the use case we designed was uh, in line with like an advertising uh, company for a pet food brand. So the, uh, consider the scenario that the brand has certain customers and now they are looking at who else should they market their products to. And they have this particular uh, social network data with them, which is like, this is like a very common set. 
So we thought that this could be like two simple ways to uh, validate our approach. So the first one says that, um, uh, hey, if you have an existing customer or uh, someone who has already been identified as a very relevant person to market to, then any friend of theirs is somewhat relevant that we can assert. It. Now, this becomes strongly relevant or fully relevant if that friend also has a similar kind of pet. Uh, pet, so like if they, they both have a dog or they both have a cat, something like that. So, uh, strongly relevant is like a bound of 1-1 one, one in this very simple example and uh, partially relevant would be a bound of 0.621. So, how the inference possible flow through this graph would be like, let's say Mary is an existing customer, so we have the bounds of 1-1. One, one. Then at P equals 1 because of rule 1 and rule 2 firing. So the rule 1 is that rule which said partially relevant. So Mary and John, they are friends, but they don't share the same kind of effect. So John becomes partially relevant, whereas Justine becomes completely relevant to the advertising scheme because they have a, the same kind of pet, which is a cat. But how this uh, cascades or diffuses is basically at the next time step, Justine and John uh, they are friends and they share like the uh, same kind of pet. Uh, I mean, if John can have both a cat and dog. And then rule two fires and we say that, okay, John is no longer just partially relevant, he's fully relevant and he should be targeted for the advertising. Also, let's, uh, so we looked at the logical rule as we all understand it. So YAML is like a very popular format right now for these kind of interfaces and this is how we would model it. So let's get rid of the header with the rule there. So. <laughs> Uh, as you see the rule on top, uh, that has like four clauses in the body. So that goes into the uh, NACUT criteria, which is short for neighbor criteria. So each of those clauses are represented by each of these lines. And then the uh, function in the head will go in the annotation function. In this case, it's the base classical case. The delta is also, there's a space and then it also says which predicate uh, are you trying to uh, target, that's the target predicate basically. And everything in capital is obviously a variable which is grounded during execution. So in the previous example you saw then Mary, John and Justin will be grounded in place of uh, X, no sorry, Y I think, yeah. And P will be the pet. And X and Y are both uh, people, yeah. So more details are there in our GitHub repository as to how you can convert and we are currently actually working on getting a parser to work so that you can take like a data lover prologue input and then put that. Uh, that will automatically be put into a YAML form. So this is the inference result for the experiment we talked about. So we, uh, the population size in this network is 1.6 million people. Uh, we selected around 2,300 people who had pets and then we ran it for till it converts. So this is like, uh, this, this looks something uh, like that that makes sense in, in such a setting. Obviously our focus is on explainability and scalability. So this is the rule chase I was talking about. So this is, I feel, is very important, something uh, that can be used by people uh, quite a lot for uh, this application. So this is just filtered from the Pandas data frame that you get for a single node ID for just two time steps. But this, this, we have seen that this goes up to a few million entries or more once the entire inference process goes. So it's useful, obviously, like I said, to uncover causal relationships. And from a practical standpoint, it's really useful for debug. That's the whole point, right? We say, black box models, why is it giving this output? I don't know. I want to go back and look. Well, you can in this case. So how do you interpret it? Again, like more details on the GitHub repo. But just to show, like, let's put these rules up and down. So the first one is for the rule one. And uh, basically what you see those six digit numbers are node IDs. So what this says is that that capital Y has been grounded with this specific node ID. And this X and Y has been grounded with these node IDs. And similarly for rule two. And essentially if you were to have this trace at the end of the inference process, you can exactly pinpoint why a certain interpretation changed at a certain time point. Scaling capacity, another thing uh, we promised that it scales. And this was put in the paper for uh, how many, uh, like we ran the experiment by fixing the number of nodes and changing the number of time steps and then change the number of nodes as well. And it shows like sublinear uh, uh, scaling. 
and uh, as a matter of fact, and, and just to mention, like this is uh, on an AWS instance which costs like two uh, two dollars an hour to run. So I think that's not too shabby to do that. And, and we have actually continued experimenting, and we have gone up to 36 million ground atoms uh, with sublinear scaling. So that's like in under 20 minutes we have achieved that. So that that occurred after the paper was submitted, but it's on our online only supplement. So, um, yeah, so we have a, quite a few ongoing work or some of the things are in the pipeline. So, uh, there's rule learning through induction, uh, which is the neural component <coughs> uh, synthesizes well with five reason. Then we're trying to do scene understanding with scene graphs. We are also looking at specification checking in video frames. And uh, tasks like knowledge graph completion or transfer learning in reinforcement learning agents are also where goes synergizes really well with this. So this is one of the ongoing work done by one of my colleagues in the lab. So uh, PyReason dot learn that's what we call it, uh, which kind of its output will be fed into PyReason. So we get uh, perception uh, from like a CNN from from the world, and then we do simple grounding and then. The uh, by reason that learn learns those rules which can easily be transferred to other domains. The another one is scene graph understanding. So we are looking at military and uh, autonomous vehicle applications. So what we're saying is that look, you have background knowledge, you get some perception input, and together we put those two things together, and we can understand the scene very well. And this kind, of, this kind of work will be uh, useful for tasks like completing knowledge gaps or identifying composite items. So a sequence of actions could be an activity, for example. And it, it can easily be extended for time sequences because, like I said, my reason supports finite temporal logic. So yeah, this is like the summary of my reason performs deduction using generalized annotated logics. These are some of the key features. Uh, we have a web page up as well, uh, and we, uh, that has uh, the link to the GitHub, that has the link to this paper uh, and its online supplement, uh, and it's all the details, more details, and you can scan this QR code or even the website is written on top. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel which Professor spoke about yesterday. So we not only cover our work, but for people uh, new to this area, uh, we kind of cover all the recent advances. Try, try to do as much as we can, really, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and uh, that's could be a good starting point. So that's me on the left. That's Professor on the right. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we can build something good together. That's like the intention. I hope I'm good on time and take some good, good, good quick questions. And if it's really tough, I hope Professor will help me out. <laughs>